I've always found solace surrounded by video games. I've been actively collecting for about a decade now and I've always tried my best to showcase my love for it through my videos. Whether it was doing tours of my old bedroom, showing everything on my shelves, making game testing episodes, playing my latest pickups, or even just creating a fun space that I can both work and wind down in. Over the years, those of you who've followed me through this time will have seen my gaming setup evolve and grow. But all of that got taken away from me in 2020. So the short version is that I left a domestic violence situation and was fortunate enough at the time to find an apartment for myself. And I loved that space. I had so many opportunities there. It brought me great fortune both through my work but also in my personal life as well. So when I was asked to vacate back to that domestic violence situation after 12 months when my lease expired, it affected me in ways that I can't even begin to describe and my mental health continued to get worse and worse. Now this isn't a cry for sympathy, it's just real life and real life sucks sometimes, what can I say? I've tried to figure it all out in my head these last few years how to appropriately convey all of this information, so in an effort to foster a more real and personable space both for myself and all of you here in this community, I'm just telling it how it is. And the bottom line is that I have been through the shits. Even despite busting my ass, it was never enough both in regards to viewership as well as in real life, feeling like my wheels were spinning on ice, not going anywhere. And through all of that for the longest time, it felt like I'd lost such a large part of my identity. My game room. Now, I'm a nerdy man-child, there's no hiding that fact, but I'm not a man defined by those interests. I have a lot of interests, but what I've lacked bouncing around houses, living out of hotels and couch surfing, and even at one point I was placed into a men's shelter in the middle of the night, through all of that chaos, what I've missed the most is a space to call my own and actually express and indulge those interests that fuel my drive. My drive to want to create and learn and explore and fulfill my goals in life. So this video is a celebration of finally making it. Welcome to my new home in Melbourne, Australia and the journey of setting up my game room. The majority of my game collection was packed up in 2020 when I first moved and put into storage since I didn't have a lot of space in my apartment. Even though I was really happy there, I guess I suffer with object permanency a lot because it was difficult for me to wrap my head around what games I actually owned, so I was rarely in the mood to play anything that wasn't right in front of me. Moving back to my old bedroom in April of 2021, knowing it was short term, most of my stuff stayed packed away, but I did decide to set up one shelf of games just so that I had a somewhat normal and familiar background for filming videos on. That didn't last long. August of 21, I packed up literally all of my shit into a storage unit and gave a middle finger to my childhood bedroom and then I just kind of drifted around trying to find a place to live amidst an ever-growing housing crisis due to a lack of homes and influx of people into the state where I was living. 14 months I searched for a house and I made zero progress. My partner and I decided to look elsewhere and within three weeks we had successfully scored the house we're in now and plans were in motion for the big move. Step 1. Move all of the shit. 
thankfully everything was mostly already packed up and organised. We just had to safely wrap and label everything, which was a huge undertaking. Six straight hours, with a really bad flu I might add. I was throwing up and out of commission for a week. With such a big gap of time between packing and actually travelling, I decided to keep my computer towel with me, which meant that I had to get a little creative to bring it on the plane with me. The service dude at the airport was like, Man, I've never seen anything like that before, but you've done a good job. We'll make sure it gets there safely. And with that, we launched off to our new home. <laughs> That's when the fun really began. So yesterday was my birthday. The delivery people came and dropped off all the boxes. All this shit here is mine. This shit here is mine. But yeah, here's the starts of the game room. This is all pretty much games and just stuff to unpack. You can see Mario's bussy there poking out. Um, there's even more in the in there. That's all games and just other stuff. Um, that that's full of games and DVDs I bought while on holiday here the other month. Um, but it's it's coming together. I was starting to get a feel for how it's going to look with the shelves up, dresser, my old dresser. Brand new desk. After so long without a house, it's so nice to see this room starting to come together a bit. Because it's like, holy fuck, there's actually like a future in this house for us. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to get set up. Okay, so it's currently 7.30am. I've been awake since 3am to watch the Summer Game Fest, which sucked ass. Um, now that I've finally got some light and some energy, I'm going to begin finally sorting out all these boxes and boxes of video games. Now I've only got two shelves to work with, which is going to make it difficult. I can bring in a third shelf if need be, but it'll have to go behind that dresser and look all weird. It's been kind of overwhelming for me to process just the amount of stuff I have now that it's in this space. Like even the cupboards are already just full of things. but um. The one thing I am certain of is that I have over a thousand games that need organising. So I'm going to start the bulk of the shelf off with PS2 games. And I'm just going to see where I end up. Step 2. Building the game room. Okay, first box. PS2 games A through H. Okay, well, that one is not A through H. It's also a horrible game. Um, <laughs> many of these were packed uh, back in 2020 when I originally moved into my apartment and I have uh, gone through and shuffled things um, over the last two years so God knows what's where I think I'll just start by just putting everything up and I'll work out alphabetizing everything later on I decided first up that there is no point trying to be all OCD and organise everything until I actually know where certain games are going to live. The last time I even had shelves set up was when I upgraded from 2 up to 3 back in 2019 and just had a massive wall of games, mostly due to growth from the big PS2 testing box. Seriously, the sheer volume of PS2 games I own is insane. Every single crate I open has more PS2 games, more PS2 games, more PS2 games. <sighs> Trying to downgrade back to only having two shelves was kind of a daunting task, I'm not going to lie, but that's okay. You've just got to start chipping away, working with the space we've got, and I always like a challenge. Please admire the excellent work I did to keep all my games relatively alphabetized when I packed all this stuff uh, two years ago just for me to come down here and completely fucking ruin it <laughs> man this is this is doing a number on my OCD god damn it I had just enough 360 games for a perfect row all except for one game that just fucking ruined it Bastard. This probably looks like a huge effort for a lot of people, but honestly, I find this part of the process incredibly satisfying and rewarding. 
many of the OCD gang will understand. Having things set up the way you like, and oftentimes the journey to get you there, just hits the right way. Okay, I've been working now for about an hour, um, and I think I've got a pretty good foundation going on. So the entire bottom half of the shelves is just the tall DVD sized cases, PS2, Xbox 360, GameCube, Wii, OG Xbox, and I've also got my PS3 games there. And with a bit of a reshuffle, there will be room for expansion on all of these systems. Yeah, I think next best course of action, given I have a lot of PS1 games, is to get them onto the shelf. PS1, Super Nintendo, NES, PS4, Okay, so I found another container full of my stuff, which has more 360 games, more PS1 games. Oh god. Oh, it really never ends. I knew that I had a lot of stuff, but like I was saying earlier, object permanence really left me without a realistic idea of how much I truly had. I've been doing this a decade now, and I've accumulated a lot over that time, much of it through fan donations and by covering certain topics on the channel. There is a lot of precious memories attached to so much of this stuff. You know, I'm probably an undiagnosed hoarder, but at the current moment anyway, <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I'm just over the moon getting to see all of my stuff again after so long, and rediscovering long lost memories. But with the shelf space filling up very quickly, I had to bring out some small additions for space, and I was considering placing this small shelf here by the window, maybe for some Atari stuff. But it's so close to direct sunlight and also a heating duct that I'm kind of worried about things getting damaged. My Crash Bandicoot Rosaurus figures have been damaged by sunlight over the years, more so sitting in storage for so long. The plastic has gone a horrible, pissy yellow. So I'd like to avoid that happening to anything else if possible. Step 3. Organising the games. So I've decided to put this shelf up on the dresser just for some extra storage for books and manuals and guides and stuff like that. I'm actually really happy with how that looks. Um, now I've got a spot here on the end and I've got the perfect thing to fill it. In this container, as you can see, it says Vectrex. Now, what the fuck is a Vectrex? It's a super old home arcade machine. Um, as you can see, it has a built-in screen. And, um, yeah, it's going to look really awesome there. Sat up on the end of the dresser. Alright, so after about two hours of work, I got my main shelf set up and organised. So now that this shelf is full, the problem I face is that I still have a big stack of Atari games, a container full of boxed Game Boy stuff. Oh, and not only that, I also have a box of Sega stuff, which I just don't even know where to begin with that. What I'm going to do, or I've already started to do, is that in these drawers I've put all my PSP games um, and my one Engage game, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Um, so I think mostly to keep the boxed Game Boy stuff um, safe from sun damage, I might actually set them up inside of um, the drawers here. The concept of storing away my boxed Game Boy stuff in the dresser sounded good on paper, but unfortunately, the boxes are too big by literally a centimetre, so the drawer won't actually close. So in the end, I was forced to reshuffle the shelf and have them out on display, which I am happy about. This part of my collection has really grown the past few years, I'm just hoping sunlight doesn't affect their condition too much. Also in the reshuffle, I made space for the Sega games up here as well. Now, in my house update video, I showed off this awesome little TV unit that I'd purchased off of Facebook Marketplace for a whopping 10 bucks. It's on wheels and perfect to set up my CRT along with my Atari 2600 so that I can wheel that out whenever I want to do some super retro gaming. So it made sense to store all of my loose Atari cartridges in the lower drawer away from dust and all that nasty stuff 
as they fit perfectly and I've got lots of room to add more over time given that I rarely pick these up. As for my boxed games for the system, I did consider having them on display in this additional cube shelf, but to be honest, a lot of these boxes are really tattered. It is a system that isn't played very often and I want some of my other gaming media on display here. Keeping the plastic clamshell cases on the end between the Vectrix and magazines works pretty well, then inside of the cupboard I used another smaller shelf for the cardboard boxes. Down the line I would like some longer shelving in here for boxed accessories and other overflow storage, but this works really well for now. So I have spent the entire day in this room getting organised and while there is still quite a mess, most of it hidden away inside the cupboard, the game room is looking good so far. Now all of this needs organising but the problem is, the problem is, is that these are like leaning forward. Um, one of these is clearly more dodgy than the other. So I'm going to have to take all of the games off. I have a spare shelf I can try to replace it with, but um, yeah, I've got to make it safe. Man, let me tell you, this was an effort. Emptying the entire shelf after such a long, exhausting day is not what I wanted to do, but I was driven to have the foundations of this room completed. I do have a few of these black shelves around the house, so I tried replacing the one that wanted to fall over, but they all seem to lean forward somewhat. Even the one next to it under the weight of all of these games still moved when I walked past, so my guess is that the floor here is just uneven. So for a quick solution, I cut some thick cardboard off of some of our moving boxes and place it underneath the front, and shockingly, these shelves are super sturdy now. I can jump around and they don't even budge, so I'm really happy with that ending to an excruciating yet mega productive day. Alright, so last night I worked overtime and alphabetized the top half of the shelf including PS1 games. Uh, the PS1 games were an absolute mission. This entire section here is just S. Um, I also did the, the, the smaller uh, sections below, the Wii, the GameCube and the original Xbox. So I've only got PS2 and 360 left to go. And the space is pretty full, so what I've decided to do is actually sort out some of the shitty sports games and shovelware that I don't really fucking need displayed. Like, I'll still keep them for if I ever want to review Fever Pitch Soccer or Mario Andretti Racing as part of the Mario uh, Brothers series review. Other than that, um, yeah, that'll help free up some space for more actually decent good games. Because let me tell you, that shovelware box did some damage on my fucking storage space. Even though my back was aching, I was so eager to jump up the following morning and start alphabetizing the last of the games in the PS2 and Xbox 360 sections. These are the two largest chunks of what I own, 137 Xbox 360 games and 283 PS2 games at the time of recording this video, which is just under 50% of my entire collection. But with these all organised, the entire shelf is looking excellent, and I've just got to say it, I'm so fucking happy seeing this. It makes my entire body so warm just knowing that this space I'm building is going to foster so much creativity, so much fun and good memories playing games with my friends. I can feel the video making gears starting to turn inside of my brain and man I'm just so excited for the future here. So to celebrate, it was time to unwind with a quick Lego break. What have I got? Well, technically they're nano blocks. These tiny microscopic pieces are a bastard to deal with, but I just couldn't pass up building a miniature Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> Step four, the perfect TV unit. Okay, so while I was sorting through all my stuff, I came across this folder full of notes that I've written for old uh, video ideas and stuff like that which is just crazy. So I wanted to go through these on camera 
Um, here is an idea or a concept storyboard I had for my um, intro for reviews that I made, um, God, forever ago. 2017. Oh, there's so many of these. Looney Tunes Acme Arsenal review. Maybe someday. Um, Thai episode one. We're starting our journey here in the Cataract Gorge in Launceston. Oh, that's my, that's a shopping list for some videos. <laughs> Long games versus short games. And how preference changes. Good lord. What's that one say? Ratchet and Clank review idea. I need the money. <laughs> <laughs> Shelf, what is all this crap? Oh, shit. Yeah, this is for a shelf. Oh my god. So, for the longest time, I couldn't find a TV unit that I liked for all my stuff. So, I'd actually planned on building one. And there's like actual measurements and plans here. I wanted it to be like adjustable so I could fit more systems in as the collection grew. Holy shit, I haven't seen this in so long. Even since before I started collecting games and accumulating all of these different consoles, I had this old wooden bench as a TV unit. It was a nightmare to try and house all of my different systems. It looked so ugly and oh, I just hated the damn thing. But with the goal to have all of my systems connected at once, no alternatives I could ever find in stores or online really met my needs. I am incredibly fussy when it comes to this topic. Now, a lot of people might be like, well, why do you need everything hooked up all at once? Well, the big thing for me is just convenience. Having to forever set up and then pack up various systems all of the time is a huge effort, and over time will cause wear and tear on both cables and the ports they're plugged into, ultimately damaging the systems we love so much. So not being able to find any sort of TV unit that I liked, building my own design that was versatile enough to accommodate for new additions was always a goal of mine that unfortunately never saw completion. Thankfully, I'm happy to report that I've actually managed to find the perfect TV unit for my needs. It's from Ikea, and with adjustable shelves, drawer space, and a perfect fit for the room, I couldn't not purchase this. I mean, look at it. It's just perfect. Well, it was once the damn thing was actually put together. Oh boy, this was a whole other story. I've built a lot of these flat pack furniture things over the years, including ones from Ikea, but this one actually broke me at multiple points. Endless instructions for individual segments all related to different pieces of furniture, and endless amounts of extensive backtracking because there was no order to the chaos. Oh, it was such an ordeal. I just... Look, I don't even want to focus on it too much. Once the actual cabinet was constructed, I was able to pull out all of my different systems and experiment on a working configuration before locking everything into place. I did my best to manage cables efficiently and everything thankfully has room to breathe. Now, one downside to this, I am currently limited to the systems I own. Anything else in the future I might want to add in, I would definitely struggle to find the room for. There is some drawer space and some room on top next to the TV, but for now at least, I'm incredibly happy with the end result. Now that it's done, seeing this room, it really just feels complete now with, with the game shelf, my desk in the corner and the TV. I'm, oh, I'm just, <laughs> I'm sort of over the moon. I'm a little bit like, I don't know what to say. I'm just, I'm wrapped. It's so good. It fits the space well. I've got room above to hang posters and stuff. Um, I'm gonna have room for a couch in here at some point. Yeah, this is, this is fucking awesome.
I must say, while this was a monumental task over several long days on very little sleep, it was totally worth it. I've already fallen in love with this space, but also, just being able to vibe and play some games again has done me the world of good. Everything from the Atari 2600 to modern releases and all the gems in between. And as a result, I can already feel within myself a more positive outlook for the future. Seeing all of my stuff, some of it that had been in storage for over two years, has really got my creative juices flowing on potential new projects for the channel, but most importantly, I truly feel like this is going to be an extremely safe space for me to express my interests and now more than ever, my identity and self-perception has never been happier or healthier. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope it was interesting or insightful. Um, stay tuned for a more in-depth tour of my game collection sometime in the future. And um, just a note, while I'm not instantly back to releasing new review videos just yet, content is on the horizon. So until then, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and remember to share it with your friends and on social media. I'm Square Eye Jack, and I hope you have a great fucking day. Cheers, guys.